Yo. Hey, how's it going? Talk to me, brother. What's going on? Uh, I think uh, I wrote most of the stuff in Metify, but to summarize, I guess, uh, I just am not finding much consistency. You okay. know? Yeah, that's always that's definitely the hardest part. <clears throat> At once you get higher elo, consistency is definitely the hard part. Yeah, I made it to. Uh, I mean, uh, a couple of days ago, I was like 400 LP, mm. but as soon as I hit 400 LP, it was like I wasn't playing the same way I was playing before, like when I played in Diamond, you know, mm -hmm. where I played very selfishly. Because mm -hmm. the champs I play are supposed to be played very selfishly, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, they, they rely resources. on economy. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but then I started playing way more safe. And I don't like that at all. So why'd you, you do know? that? I don't know. I guess it's kind of like uh, maybe some form of ranked anxiety or something. Uh, I guess I just don't think I'm, I guess it's also like imposter syndrome. I don't think I belong. Hmm. I see. I see. I see. Okay. So when did the whole ranked anxiety thing start? When did this? Uh, I mean, this season, the matchmaking is really bad. Oh, it's true. So I'm playing with, yeah. so I'm playing with like challenger players. Like, mm -hmm. they've been challenger for, like, their entire life since I they've been in diapers. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm just, like, new, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I played with a few challengers before, like, in Season 12. But even then, I, I felt, like, kind of like an imposter. Mm hmm Okay. So, um, <clears throat> let me kind of quickly explain the difference between, like, low challenger do you know what the difference between like low challenger slash like grandmasters players and high challenger players is do you know how like do you know um <clears throat> why it gets more difficult to climb the higher you go even though even in grandmasters you can get matched in, against challenger players yeah i'm not too sure about that uh i mean like how i kind of like see it uh based on the champions i play there's like Viper, mm -hmm. who's like really good at the champion, but he plays really different from how I play. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's Adrian, who's like, according to his video, he's like budget Viper, and he uh, he does the same thing as Viper does basically. The way he plays, he's a bit more uh, creative, I guess, because he like invades the jungler a lot. Yeah. Um, and then there's me, I. <laughs> I just play safe and hope I get carried. Yeah, well, we both know. I don't even have to tell you that playing safe, hoping to get carried ain't going to get you anywhere. Um, yeah. So, and that leads me to my point on why I asked you this in the first place. So, the biggest difference, or like the, the reason it gets harder and harder to climb, even though, like, I remember I was like 500 LP challenger back then. And I was like, okay, I'm playing, I, you know, playing with the entire spread of players, like from rank one to, you know, uh, grandmasters. So it can't get any harder. The thing is, the more LP you get, the more matchmaking is going to put worse players on your team to balance out the matchmaking from both teams. So yeah. basically the point is, no matter how high elo you get, the whole mentality and st and like, game plan of selfish get as many resources as possible so you can carry it, that becomes even more important because if if like if you hit you know like the higher the higher elo you are the higher chance that your teammates are much worse than you so you're going to be that you're going to have to carry them against other challenger players you know what i'm saying yeah so like i said i don't need to tell you that playing safe hoping to get carried gets you nowhere i think we've actually talked about that before anyway but yeah that's why it the uh that's why it's it just becomes more and more important so um when it comes to consistency 
that also plays a part in consistency. But the biggest thing with consistency is laning phase, of course. Uh, without a consistent laning phase, then there is no consistency at all. And when I say consistent laning phase, I don't mean like a laning phase where you don't die. I mean a laning phase where if the enemy top laner is making mistakes and they go unpunished, then you won't, you can't be consistent. So consistency means consistently punishing bad laners and being able to hold your own against laners that don't give you windows to get ahead. Uh, I've also noticed like when I do try to play aggressive, right? I try to change it up and uh, attempt to, uh, instead of playing all safe, and reserved i try to be aggressive it happens to be the wrong time to be playing aggressive and i i die to a gank or i'm not supposed to uh be aggressive on that timer because maybe tf can roam mm -hmm. and i've noticed there's a lot of more tfs now yeah and so a lot more evelyn's and it's a lot harder for me to understand how to play against them because uh it feels like if I make one mistake, if I click in the wrong place, I'm dead. Yeah, that could happen. That is, Evelyn's definitely bullshit champ. <clears throat> really, really annoying to play. The reason why Evelyn can be annoying is because um, in a solo queue setting, right? It's like you are trying to get a lead before your teammates get ran over. And, they, and like you're almost on a timer sometimes. So when Evelyn is making it feel like you can't, walk up and push your lead it's fucking obnoxious right so dealing with evelyn and tf are both different things but i, I see your main point here it's like you're trying to be aggressive or like you're you're trying to be aggressive but then you end up you know dying to something because you you didn't know if you could be aggressive there or something like that so kind of the main question here then is <clears throat> actually so it's basically like if you can't be able to like track where people are and like know if it's you should always know how risky an all-in is like you should know okay if i go in here evelyn could be here but you're taking a gamble based off a certain certain percentage of her being there based off of the last time you saw her, whatever information you have on the map so for example if I'm playing top lane, um, <clears throat> if I'm playing top lane and I want to go in and kill somebody, but Ev it, there's Evelyn. Like, and while while I'm looking to go in, I see bot laners are fighting for like 20 seconds, and Evelyn doesn't show up. I see mid lane fighting. My jungler ganks mid. Evelyn doesn't show up. You know, see like from now you can deduce that Evelyn is probably top side at the time, but like that's an example of like. Based off the information you have, you have to, you know, you can't really just sit back and do nothing, right? You can't let Evelyn control you that much. So it's almost like <clears throat> you have to either know where she was, like either by warding one of her camps or know where she could be based off of what, I, like an example I just gave. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of the next part, though. That's like... Once you know your limits and you know when you can kill somebody, the next part is, okay, doing it when you know the enemy jungler can't show up or something like that. Um, so like I, like I haven't seen your gameplay uh, any, uh, recently at all. So I'm not sure what the laning phases are looking like. If you're winning lane consistently, if you're punishing mistakes consistently, because if you're doing that consistently and the only reason games are hard is because you're going in and then getting ganked at the same time, then that's pretty easy to fix. But without seeing the gameplay, it's a little bit hard to know. Hi, Tom. Uh, it's a, a mix of being ganked a lot and then not uh, being consistent with like my crashes. Uh, so I have this really bad... Uh, Hill mentality. And I think I've told you this before, where a lot of my leads were mm -hmm. because I'm I was uh I played the matchup mechanically better. But that doesn't mean that uh I played 
the wave correctly because maybe I'm cra I'm not crashing the wave in time. So let's say it's second wave, right? Mm -hmm. It's about to crash under the tower. Third wave is coming. Instead of crashing, I go for the kill, and it's a bad mistake. But it's like a habit, I guess. Uh, I wouldn't even call that a habit. I feel like a habit is more of like, like an involuntary, minuscule thing that, like, I look at that more as, like, that. that's a different issue, I would say. And I'm, that's what we need to figure out. So you're saying, so you're saying you, explain that scenario one more time so I understand it clearly. You said this say, is common. Uh, it's common. It's like one of the mistakes I've noticed that I'm making more often. I'm not like, I don't have to dive them as soon as like, I, oh, I, see, I see them. Yeah, like, I could dive them once the wave crashes. I don't have right, to dive right. them without the wave, right? Right, right. Yeah, of course. Okay, I was like, so you consistently see that? Yeah, see, that's not a habit. That's like tunnel vision and not, it's so like, that's a very easy fix. You go into every single game, like, okay, I'm not going to dive without crashing. Like, if I have the chance to dive them, I'm always going to crash first. And you go into every single game looking to fix that one thing. And if you don't fix it, then, because like, the the way these things normally go is like you know what the mistake is you go into game you make the mistake and then you're aware of the mistake you're like oh shit that was that thing I needed to fix that's the first step normally then once you're aware of it eventually your brain does catch on and then stops you from doing it but if you just go if you just like vod review be like oh that's what I did wrong and then you go into the game and do it and like you don't intentionally and like be completely aware of what happened then you'll never get into that habit. You need to like go into the game with that goal of fixing that thing. And that's how you progress way quicker than and that's how you progress quicker than other people. Um, and that's also how you get like good practice compared to bad practice. If you're trying to fix fifteen things at once, it's not gonna work. So Yeah, that's a problem I have. I try to fix fifteen things at once, but it doesn't work out for me because it gets overwhelming. I don't know what to uh really uh fix in the moment so I, I gave you that example of like how i dive without i just dive a tunnel vision on the kill the same thing with uh let's say another mistake would be that happens i guess a bit more often than it should like the junglers around i know the junglers around but i feel like i could kill them you know, you feel like you kill my kill laner, the enemy laner, and but you don't yeah. feel like you can one v two. Yeah. Okay. I take that one v one, but it's not good because if the wave is pushing to me, then the jungler just crashes the wave, and then my lane is doomed. Right. <clears throat> so you're saying, waves coming to you. You f you know you can fight the enemy laner, but then the jungler comes top and crashes the wave and like saves them. Well. Sometimes that happens, but like I'm fighting in the wave, you know, I don't have to. I could just let the wave come to me, let it crash, take the farm and not fight. Even though it's saved, like even if the jungler saves me, at least I don't die and I catch the wave. Okay. But instead, I'm just fighting for no reason. And it's partially because I'm not thinking actively about the game. Like I've only gone this far just solely on autopilot. Well, a lot of people think so there are people that play they play and then if you ask them like why they do what they did like challenger players and they'll they'll be like they just play off a of feel. Um <clears throat> which means it's not that they're not thinking. It's that yeah, they're kind of they're going through the motions but based off of like repetition and just yeah, like off a of feel from playing the game for so long. Now, a lot of people start off that way. When I <clears throat> I remember when I first played or first hit like, I don't know, Diamond or Masters way back in like season 4. I played that way too. Um and going from playing like that to 
thinking at all times, it's almost like first it takes a while. It takes, that's like a thing you do have to practice a skill to practice. But the big one is, uh, it's almost like you, you want to have yourself like spectating. It's like, it's like, okay. Okay. Here's a good example. Let's say you're watching somebody else play. It's actually pretty easy to watch someone else play and think about these things that I'm like, it's very easy to watch someone else play because they're piloting the champ. And you can think about all these things that you are saying you mess up right now, right? But when you're playing, it's much harder because you're piloting the champ, you know, and, and this is called like mental stack, right? Because you're piloting the champ has taken up a good amount of your mental stack. So then adding on, you know, uh, adding on the paying attention to the jungler, all these are things we're talking about is much harder because your mental stack is overwhelmed. So you go into a kind of like a, an autopilot um, state where you're just playing off a of feel because so much is happening at once. So the way to fix that is you need to figure out what could be taking up the mental stack. And some some things that take up mental stack aren't there's no way to really remove it so like piloting your champ is always going to take up some mental stack no matter how many games you have um but there's a, sometimes people pay attention to things they don't need to pay attention to so again it is hard to know w without seeing your gameplay it's very like i'm just speaking off of like the information i've i have um but the interesting thing here is like you know your issues. Like you know your issues and you know the mistakes you make con constantly. So then it, my question to you is are you doing what I'm saying that you should be doing where you're going into the games looking to fix one specific thing? Uh yeah, I don't do one specific thing. Uh I think uh I'm focused on too many things. Right, that's, that's and funny. then I'm too focused on winning the LP instead of trying to improve. Mm -hmm. And that's that like that that is a hard like mental hurdle to play to uh, play to improve or playing to win, but and like that that's also practice. Like you don't just go from you know playing to win to complete monk mental playing to improve overnight. It is a practice thing and like reminding yourself and trying to look like, cause I know one of your other pain points was, um, how, to, oh, I know you said how to feel less terrible after a game goes wrong. Um, <clears throat> the way to feel less terrible is like looking for the bright side uh, in, in the games. Cause you kind of got to like, you know, losses are inevitable, you know? Uh, so any game, that like you felt really bad on like this it all ties up because if you're going into the game looking to improve and you did not you did learn something in that game or you did fix something then you won't be as upset when when things go wrong or when you lose like you, you should almost you should be happy when and when i say like you improved at something i don't mean you fixed it i mean like you do something and like i said the first step is always being aware of what you what you messed up so, like, if you weren't catching the mistakes that we're talking about, and then in the game you caught it, and you're like, oh, this is that moment. Like, even that, you can be, you should be happy with a game like that, because that means you are improving. You are fixing it. But it takes some time. So. That makes sense. That, like, that's kind of how you feel less terrible about losses. It's like, did I gain something from this? And if not, if you're like, damn, I didn't learn anything. You should open up the VOD because I guarantee you, you will learn something. If you open up the VOD and look at what went wrong, what went right, it's very rare you will, won't will find something that you did wrong or find a window to do something that you didn't realize you had. Um, and then you won't feel so bad about that game because you did, like if you're coming out of the games with a takeaway, with, with you, you improve somewhere, you learn something, whatever it is, then you shouldn't be... I'm not going to say you should be happy because of course nobody likes to lose, but it shouldn't make you feel bad because that means you are progressing. You don't want to think of 
you don't want to use your LP as a metric for how much you're progressing. Because it you, the LP is temporary. Like, if you think about it, especially if you're not a, a player that, you know, has almost mastered going from unranked to challenger with an insane win rate, right? If you're not one of those players, which we know you're not right now, then your if your expectations like if you're if you expect to just climb like a diagonal like if we're looking at a graph of your LP, it's not it should never just be a diagonal straight up. It's always going to go up and down. It's always going to be a hill. Um and honestly, some of the I've learned the most when I'm on those declines. Because the thing about this game is there's so many different things. And like the people that can climb with a really, really insane win rate, they have all the different aspects of the game down. That's like what creates the consistency. They're laning, they're team fighting. And it comes down to even the smallest things. When they use flash, when they save flash, because that's a big thing, especially on someone like Riven. Like right, right now I've been trying to learn to play Gragas. Like if I'm playing Gragas and it's like mid to late game, I need to like readjust my value of flash compared to when I'm playing a different champ. Because Gragas flash is really strong, like anti flash. You can make huge plays with it, right? So Yeah. But then like if I'm watching a really good Gragas player, or like, you know, a very, very high rank player, they wouldn't they won't waste their flash in, in the mid to late game. But if I'm watching a, a worse player, like a Masters Grandmasters player, you will see them waste the flash. That's just like one of those small things that adds gives more consistency. All of these things, you know, there's there's so many different skills and concepts that you need to master to reach a level of, uh, to reach cons- like um, consistent gameplay at a high level. Because that's what it comes down to. And that's why the difference between like high challenger and like diamond one is massive, right? It's like, uh, I would say there's a bigger gap there than like diamond and, and silver. So <clears throat> when, we're, for, when we're talking about consistency and like not feeling so bad, that's like what the, like it, it all comes down to expectations and your goals. Because if, if your expectations aren't unrealistic, then like, you know, like sadly you, you can be on a 20 game win streak. You know, the losses are coming. doesn't matter. You know you're not playing. You you know you are not a high challenger player. So a little bit of matchmaking RNG. You're going to go on a big win streak, but you are going to fall back down. And it's inevitable, and you got to hold that and be prepared for it. And then when it starts happening, you don't let the losses adjust your play style. You need to let actual thought out um, review of your gameplay uh, affect you. The amount of times, like it's a, it can be lead to a really dangerous cycle where you start losing, you let the losses influence your gameplay just because you lost, you think you did something wrong. Um, <clears throat> and then you start to play worse and worse and worse, and then you go really down. Um, you go, you go way, way down, and then you're what happens on, on those really uh, those spikes downwards, like the declines. It, you take that, it like it hits you. Oh, I'm not doing this like I should have been doing. Like you realize that your gameplay got altered because of the the losses. And then you re, you fix your fundamentals and you go back to where you are. And then you go, you start climbing again. That cycle can never end if you don't understand how to properly review your gameplay and not use results based analysis. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make more sense than what I've been doing. So basically, at the end of the day, you're, what you need to work on is expectations, goals, and then, you know, when you're playing, actually uh, like applying these things one thing at a time, taking the time, you know, realizing it's, it's going, it's a process. Don't, ex- like, don't expect yourself to go from wherever you are now to a Adrian Riven Viper caliber player, maybe not even in one season. It's possible to do it in one season. If but that requires like extremely good mental and understanding of how to improve. Um, so yeah, that that's what you need to do. 
Those the expectations and goals are are the big ones. And then just going into the game with good practice is what will help you. Or is it what will actually let you progress. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um But yeah, that's basically I think that's really all I can um that's the most I can give without seeing, you know, gameplay. But this is like a, a pretty uh common thing for people. Like I went through it. I only know this because I went through this cycle eight thousand times. I remember in like season six or some shit, I went from like six hundred LP challenger to to diamond five. I think it was diamond five back then. To diamond five in like a week, and it was just because of like a mixture of tilt cue, letting losses affect my gameplay. And then once I reviewed my gameplay again, I'm like, damn, I'm not bodying these laners. I'm not snowballing these lanes. I'm playing too safe because, or like I'm I'm trying to play damage control because my teammates are running it five games in a row. It's so like your teammates, if they feed five games in a row, that might make you start playing that damage control thing, trying to prevent them from feeding. And then there's like a fundamental that you may maybe fixed before that's coming back around again. That's what I mean by not letting the losses like affect your your plan. Because sometimes it's going to happen. Sometimes people are going to lose five games in a row and your team is going to run it five games in a row. That's how it goes. I, I think that's like, that makes more sense now because... uh. I was playing very aggressive, but uh, then eventually I like I was winning a lot, and uh, there was a couple of games where my bot lane died like twenty times. Right. And then, or my jungler uh, tried to dive the top laner, and he both got got us both killed. You know. Mm -hmm. That 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 happened like a couple of times, and I guess that really affected how I thought about the game. Right, exactly, and it goes both ways. You can't let wins make you think you did everything right. It's not even just losses. Um, like let's say you you're getting carried a few games, like you can't just be like, okay, I'm gonna play, like whenever my team's winning, like okay, this is another thing that I had to learn the hard way. Let's say your teammates are winning lane. Um, so you're like, oh, my teammates are winning their lanes. I don't need to like try to win my lane. I can just not die. But then your teammates aren't going to carry you. And you're like, shit, I actually did need to play to win my lane because they don't care. Like it goes all the way, even all the way into challenger. Like you do have to carry and you can't hope they carry you. Even if they are winning their lanes, you got to play to get a lead. So you have control over the game. Um. Again, and like this is another thing that leads to consistency. That to be consistent, you have to have, you know, the ability. Uh, you know, you have to be able to affect the game in, in your own, like, be able to control it in some way, agency in some way. So if you're not winning lane, or if you're playing too safe, you won't have the agency that other p people will have. So, see what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, th th that's what you should. That's what you need to be thinking about and doing. I think that will help you the most. But without seeing gameplay, I can't really, you know, I can't go too much further. Um, but it's good that it seems like I think you're at a peak right now, right? Or no? Uh no, not yet. You're, you're close though, right? Uh, I was like seven hundred LP in season twelve, but uh. I guess uh, it was a bit, I guess I, I was the same, I guess I feel like uh, I was the same player as I am right now. Mm. Okay. I, I don't think I improved just that much. Just remember, like, you don't want to wake up in two months and be like, damn, I've just been, you don't want to tilt queue for two months or like play, play to win for two months. It's just a waste of your time. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a waste of time to if because those two months were time where you'd actually be improving, and then you will be at a higher rank down the line. Like don't play for short term gains. You're, you're playing. You got to play for long term gains. Like yeah. I said, LP is temporary. Yeah, like, for sure. You can go to any good play. Like some of the best players in the world, Showmaker, Rook. You know these players in Green Solo Queue, and they'll be winning lane every game and lose eight in a row. 
Because that's how it is sometimes. Yeah. But I should try to stop using LP as a metric. Yeah, LP wins and losses. That's all just results based shit. You need that's what I'm saying. Like you need to look at your scenarios, your laning phases, all regardless of the win or loss and see and, and make sure like that, that your mental energy should, you know, you should always be looking at your landing phases. To be honest, you should have one of those programs. If you're like really serious about improving or anybody that's really serious about improving one of those programs that like, once you end the game, it like pops up and you can like look through, I forget what they're called. It was like plays to you back then, but, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like the recording software where mm-hmm. you can see it from your perspective. Yeah, and in queue to the next game, you should be reviewing your laning phase at the bare minimum or re- reviewing your deaths. Re- re- like, your laning phase is just too... It's too important. If, Like I said, if we're talking about consistency, that that's where it all starts. So, yeah. <clears throat> makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> Okay. Um, any questions on anything? Any other questions you have for me? Before we wrap um, it up? No, you can wrap it up. Okay. I think I got the gist of it. All right. It's just well, a big mentality thing. Yeah, and remember, even mentality doesn't get fixed overnight. It's like the yeah. e- it's the most easier said than done thing in the game, but it's also the most like the most important thing at a higher level. So, yeah. Um, I'll Work try on those to... things. This will be a blast. Sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, I'll try to get a few games in uh, and try to find one that's good for me to review mm-hmm. with you. Mm-hmm. And I'll book a session soon again. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I would try, like, you know, reviewing whatever game you are going to bring to me. I would try reviewing it yourself first and then see what I have to say about it. Because if you can like if you can review your own gameplay and know what the mistakes were and know what you should do then like that's the harder part um then yeah. it's just the mentality of like fixing it like we were just talking about so yeah um once you get a game let me know or once you book a session i look forward to seeing it and um yeah. i will see you then sound good thanks for the talk it really helped yep no problem good luck brother thank you